Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm building a 5.3 that I'm building specifically for Boost to run in a car that I'm going to get ready for spring. I'm installing the cam bearings and I figured I'd run that over real quick. It seems a lot of people have that farmed out. It's not that hard once you do a couple things. Check it out. Alright, so this is a Gen 4, 4.8 block that I had picked up uh, because of the, uh, the heavier duty rods that, are, that come in the engine package. And I also had a 5.3 in my garage, so I took the 5.3 crankshaft and I'm mating it up with the Gen 4 4.8 rods, and then I bought forged pistons with the correct compression height to make it all work together. But also, the block has been uh, deburred. I've chased all the threads on it. I hot tanked it, then manafluxed it to make sure there wasn't any cracks. Uh, honed it out, and then just measured the piston wall clearance for the forged pistons. So we're good to go on all that. So let's go ahead and get this middle cam bearing installed. All right, so what I like to do on my cam install tool, as you see this mark here, I take a uh, Sharpie marker and mark this, this end here. And I also, Take the bearing I'm going to install and put marks on it as well. Okay, and also inside the block there are marks that will coincide with the, uh, the installation. So to make it easy, the front here, I marked this, but that was a pretty easy one to do. But as you can see in the back here, on the second one, right in here. See that mark? So that lines up with the oil galley hole here, and so with that marked, my bearing marked, and my install tool marked, it all seems to go together pretty well. Alright, so go ahead and install the tool in here. I'll show you real quick. So what I'm doing here is matching up these two marks so I can have an outside reference as I'm pounding that bearing in to make sure that I've got the oil hole filled up with the galley itself. Alright, takes a second just to get her lined up, but once it's there, you can see the mark pretty easy. So I'll throw some light on the mark inside the block. You probably won't be able to see this, but trust me, it lined up. Double check, triple check, let's get going on it. <clears throat> All 
All right, we'll give it a check here and see how we did. Should be able to see inside the bearing that the bearing is centered and oil will flow through that. All right, so here's the cam bearings all installed. Wasn't too terrible. They all went in very well, easy for cam bearings. And they came out without, came out without any scars or markings or anything serious about it. So, not too bad. If you want to do two or three engines, go ahead and consider picking up a cam bearing installation tool and, uh, and start banging these things in. We'll talk a little bit more about the uh, 5.3 4.8 build. Alright, so let's do some 4.8 5.3 maths. So, the question is, how would 4.8 rods go on a 5.3 crank and why would you do this? <clears throat> well, I got a good deal on a 4.8, a Gen 5, 4. or Gen 4 4.8, and I got a good deal on a 5.3. So the the Gen 4 4.8 has the heavy duty rods, and I wanted to use those in my uh, engine package, in my turbo engine package. <clears throat> but with those two, with the uh, 5.3 crank and the 4.8 rods, the rod and stroke package would be too long. So how are we going to make up for that, or make make an allowance for that uh, for that long rod and stroke. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and change the compression height of the piston. <clears throat> compression height of the piston is the top of the piston measured to the center line of the wrist pin. All right, so if we can move the wrist pin up into the piston package further, we can, al we can allow for the longer rod and stroke. All right, so how are we gonna figure out how to do this and find out how what the actual compression height of the piston is that we're going to require? So if we take the 5.3 crank and the 4.8 rod package and um, add those two together, you actually add the full rod length and then half the crank shaft throw and you come up with 8.086. Now the deck height on a um, LS block is 9.23. To find the compression height of the piston, we'll go ahead and subtract the 8.806, the uh, uh, rod crank package, subtract that from the 9.23 deck height, and we come out with a compression height of a piston that has to have 1.44 for a compression height. <clears throat> now Summit LS Forged Pistons, not the pro version of the ones I picked up, and they had a compression height of 1.115. Okay, so if we take the allowable compression height, 1.144, and subtract the 1.115, we get a clearance of about 0 0.029. Now I went ahead and punched this into Summit's uh, compression calculator. So we've got our bore, our stroke, our cylinder head volume. The dome on the pistons that I ordered are 2.9 cc's, um, positive, so they're dished. The deck clearance, 0 0.029, right here. And then uh, MLS gasket thickness and the number of cylinders, and it comes out to about 9.53 for the uh, compression ratio. With forged pistons and a turbo, that should be all right. With E85 as well, so, all right. So deck clearance, the 0 0.029 deck clearance is the the difference between the top of the engine block deck and the top of the piston once it is at its uh, full top dead center position. So it's this area in here. All right, so here are forged pistons that we ordered from Summit for our, uh, turbo build. The only issue is our Gen 4 rods are not bushed for 927 wrist pin. 
the diameter wrist pin for these pistons. So, what I did was had these bushings made, or wrist pin bushings, so we can go ahead and install those bushings into this Gen 4 wrist pin, or sorry, Gen 4 rod, and the wrist pin bushing is the correct diameter after some honing for the 927 wrist pin. Now these are ordered a little on the tight side, so after you press them in, you will have to hone the inside to meet up with the uh, the 927 uh, wrist pin. They are they are ordered to be on the tight side. So once you hone those out, or actually let's first press them in, then we can hone them out, and then you can hang your um, forged pistons on your Gen 4 rods on your build. Um, send me a message if you want a set of these for your build. I have them custom made, so. I can get a set to you. Just send me a message in the uh, d description. Gonna go ahead and check our piston to wall clearance here for the forged pistons. And it does look like we're on a little bit on the looser side here, but we're well within the drag race specs for a um, turbocharged engine with this bore. So. All these cylinders are looking good. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and get started on the rings. Now the Summit recommends for their pistons the ring gap to be for uh, supercharged 0 .005 um, for a ring gap factor. So multiply that by your bore of 3.5. 780 and you give come up with a, a ring gap of about point zero one eight nine so I'll round that up to point zero one nine for the uh, for the top ring gap but conversely if we go to the Hastings instructions uh, they give they give a higher number to multiply uh, by the bore so we're actually going to go with the Hastings number because it's closer to point zero two three for uh, the top ring gap. So we'll go ahead and set all these up, the top ring gap, and catch you in a second. Hey, thanks for viewing my YouTube channel. Any questions, just post them below, and please like and subscribe. Thanks. See ya.